I'm Dr. Paul Jenkins. I'm a clinical psychologist, and today I'll be reacting to Eckhart Tolle, Addiction to Thinking. Eckhart Tolle has had a very profound effect on my thinking in a lot of ways. I, I really loved his book, The Power of Now, and I highly recommend it, by the way. It's a way that we can tap into some of the processes that are going on in our own mind. As a psychologist, my job is to illuminate the obvious, which is cool because I get paid to tell people things they already know. But there's a lot of obvious things that are completely unnoticed. The processes of our own mind are in that category much of the time. And I think Eckhart Tolle does a really great job of calling our attention to some of the processes that are obvious but unnoticed. And it was very recently that I actually picked up on some videos where I got to hear him speak about some of these issues. Up until this point, I had only read his words, so I've enjoyed watching some of these videos. The one that we'll be pulling up today has Eckhart Tolle reacting to some questions that were given him by an audience member and let's listen in and see what he had to say. Now, the, the, there's a lot of talk these days about not just talk, actually it's happening, addictions. Many people are addicted to all kinds of things, substances. Uh, but one of the greatest addictions, or one of the greatest addiction, never actually, you never read about it in the papers, because the people who are addicted to it don't know it. It's the addiction to thinking. Ad addiction to thinking. I hadn't thought about it as an addiction. It's interesting to think about it in those terms. As a psychologist, I'm acknowledging and seeing that an addiction is something that we can't stop doing. Maybe that's a simple way to look at it. And because we're inside of our own head, we don't even notice it. Eckhart Tolle mentioned here that most people don't look at this as an addiction because they don't even notice that they're doing it. We get inside of our own head and it's kind of like thoughts are us. We think that our thoughts represent who we are. One of the things that I've appreciated about his philosophies and writings is that he brings to our attention that thoughts are going to happen and we can observe those thoughts, but we are not our thoughts. So it's an interesting thing to take a look at. I've, I've worked with a lot of my clients on understanding the concept of metacognition. And breaking that down, cognition is thinking. Metacognition is a higher level. It's thinking about thinking. I think Eckhart Tolle would even take it to a higher level than that, where we can get to a place where we're not thinking. Let's hear what else he had to say about this addiction. And it's an addiction because it's... First, it's been a drug, almost <laughs> it's been around for so long, and uh, it's a pseudo sense of self. So it's a great reluctance on the part of most people to let go of thinking. So he just confirmed what I was saying, that there's a pseudo sense of self. It's not truly you. Your thoughts are not truly you. But we start to identify with those thoughts. And he mentioned here that there's a great reluctance to let go of it. You know, what occurs to me as he's saying this is that we don't even see that that's a choice. And until we see it as a choice, it's not. So, of course, there's a reluctance to let go of it if we're not even aware of it. I think that's part of the power of this philosophy, to take us to a higher level where we can think about our thinking and start to see that it's not us. I think that separation is going to help with a lot of mental health issues, relationship issues. This is pretty profound. The main thing about it is presence, presence, and... Presence. When he says presence, that's a big deal. I've, I've read enough of his writings to know that there's a lot of meaning associated with that word. 
in the English language, present has at least three definitions. It means here in this place, it means now in this time, and it could also be a gift because you can give someone a present. I just wanted to comment about that because to hear Eckhart Tolle say the word present means something. Pay attention to that. Let's continue. Presence is a space of no thought, but presence can also be there in the background even when thinking is happening. You can still be not completely involved in the thinking. Thinking loses the ability to create havoc in your life and confuse you. <sighs> All right, I'm enjoying this quite a bit, mostly because I'm familiar with this man and his philosophies, he mentioned that presence is not thinking. Think about that for a minute. And he also said that it can be also kind of observing the thinking or being separated from the thinking a little bit, which is where it loses its ability to confuse you or to dis disrupt your life. This implies that every problem we have is a problem with thinking. Interesting, if you go there for just a minute, this is true based on my clinical experience. I think depression, for example, is very much focused in the past, things that have already happened. You think about depression, guilt, shame, it's usually about things that have already happened, or at least our interpretation of what those things were. Anxiety, fear, that's going the other direction where we get focused on the future, what's going to happen, and really we don't know. Present is between past and future. Present is now, present is here. I've had this conversation with a lot of my clients where I ask them right now, right now, in this moment, what, if anything, is lacking? Can you think of anything? Now you might think, well, I don't have enough money. Really? You don't have enough money right now? Think about it. You don't even need money right now. Yeah, but I'll need it in the future. See, your mind just went to the future and that's what creates the anxiety. This is a powerful concept. When he talks about present, being present here and now, that's really powerful because here and now, things are good. You might be worried about that thing that's going to, uh, see, that's the future. Or you might be concerned about what happened. Well, that's the past. That's not now. Right now, we're good. Powerful concept. Think about that. It's not to understand more or to bring some intellectual analysis to the practice, but to practice the state of not thinking, which can be arrived at by various ways, as you probably know, if you don't think about it, just do it. <laughs> okay, that's, that's funny. He's talking about practicing the state of not thinking. This is not easy. Check it out. Can you do it? Don't think. And you're thinking, right? I mean, it's almost impossible to do that. I'm not gonna play the whole video here, but I know that a little later on he gets to an exercise. In fact, I'll just share it with you here. And what I was chuckling about, by the way, when he said, don't think about it, just do it. Don't think about not thinking, because then you're thinking, just do it. Why do you do that? There's a couple of exercises that you can try. One that I got from Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, is where you just watch your thinking. So instead of thinking, notice what thoughts you're having. And the question that triggers this, you can try this as an exercise. I wonder what thought I'll have next. And then watch and see what happens. What happened when I just said it? Let's try it again. I wonder what thought I'll have next. Isn't that interesting? There's a brief little pause. Did you notice it? Here's another example, and he shares this later in the video. Pay attention in your mind to what happens from now 
to now, what happened? Were you thinking? Probably not. You were waiting to see, well, what, what's Dr. Paul doing? What is, what is this? Try it again. From now till now. Did you notice you were present? You were listening to me. You were watching what was happening. The thinking quiets. And it's so interesting in our mind. That's a peaceful, quiet place. And I think as we think about our thinking, and maybe not even think about it, just stop thinking so much, we can achieve a state of presence and peace. There's probably a lot more to that that we could get into. But I thought that was fascinating to listen to this great philosopher and teacher share some of his thoughts. Hope you enjoyed it. You can probably tell from this video that I enjoy philosophy, but especially as philosophy impacts our real life. I don't know if you were even aware of the resources that are available to you at Live On Purpose Central. There's a link in the description, go.liveonpurposecentral.com. That'll take you right there. We've got discussion groups about topics like this going on on a regular basis. Come join us at Live On Purpose Central. I'll see you there.